Hi, folks. It's Jay. I visited a garden that surpassed all my imaginations and expectations. Enclosed within a cage at a country estate, its unique design is beyond comparison, and I found myself willingly became a captive of its beauty. This is the Longsome Oak Gardens, part of the Open Gardens program in Western New York. The gardener had to leave for an appointment that afternoon, so I was granted opportunity to explore this garden by myself. Upon arrival, I wasn't sure how to enter this garden, but the greenhouse felt so inviting, pulling me towards it effortlessly. As you can see, it is a fully functional greenhouse, with shades on the roof and cold frames by the entrance. Then I realized the entire garden space was enclosed with metal fence, resembling a cage. It evoked the essence of a walled garden, delineating a space of distinct definition and purpose. Now let's enter the greenhouse. But it's more than just a greenhouse. It's a wonderfully cozy retreat, complete with a potting walking space, sitting area, decorations alongside stunning container plantings. The color scheme here is particularly striking, with vibrant orange and burgundy flowers set against blue containers. Not only does it look beautiful, but the space also serves numerous practical functions. I didn't realize I wanted a greenhouse just like this until this very moment. The enclosed garden space unfolds in front of us as soon as we step out of the greenhouse. While it exudes a charming cottage garden flair, what strikes me the most is its meticulously structured layout. The free-flowing forms of the garden beds and the gravel paths. Were crisply defined, either by metal edging or raised bed. The gardener provided a superb example in using mass planting to achieve breathtaking visual impact. More importantly, each color block was planted in proportion to the overall size of the space. This is one of the crucial principles when thinking about any garden space. As you can tell, there is no shade from any trees or structures in this garden, so the plants selected here are all sun-loving varieties. The gardener demonstrated a masterful design of a garden in full sun situation. Raised beds are cleverly employed, not just for annuals but also for vegetables and herbs. One bed bursts with zinnias, while another teems with flourishing squash plants, and of course, the sunflowers stand out in their dense, mass-planted arrangement, showcasing their full splendor in this sun-soaked garden. This is also a kitchen garden, where tomatoes and basil's mingle with other herbs amidst a tapestry of annuals and flowering perennials. The vibrant colors under the sunny sky are simply unmatched. The strategically placed obelisk trellises, though not all adorned with climbing plants, contribute height and structure to the mixed garden beds, imparting a sense of cohesion and unity throughout the space. A simple bistro set adds an air of leisure and comfort, serving as much for visual enjoyment as for actual relaxation. The metal fencing surrounding the perimeters of the garden provides full enclosure, shielding it from deer and other critters. The gardener used the fence as additional growing space. We see a few clematis blooming profusely at this corner, adding vertical interest. I believe this one is a relatively new cultivar called Sweet Summer Love. It's a hybrid between the large purple variety and the Sweet Autumn clematis. 
flowering throughout the summer with a delicate fragrance. It's one of my favorite. The fence enclosure also supports a few fruiting trees, trained in the espalier form, such as this apple tree. In this garden, there is an impressive collection of perennials, including the lavenders and the daisies. There is something inherently cheerful about daisies. They possess a natural, joyful disposition, thriving with vigor and vitality. In my experience, they are remarkably easy to grow, requiring minimum care and watering. Given the chance, they tend to fill a sunny corner of your garden with their lively presence. In the heart of the garden, there is an archway tunnel, which supports the climbing hydrangeas as well as the climbing roses. The honey-like fragrance from the roses was intoxicating, and attracted lots of pollinators. Attempting to walk through the archway, I found myself hindered by the large climbing roses. As I turned the other way, I saw two tree-formed hydrangea paniculata guarding the far end of the garden, like two little soldiers. Every corner of the garden is brimming with life. A raised bed filled with zinnias. Another one with annual salvias, and this one looks like some type of a raspberry bush. And this seems to be a bed of dahlia, which are yet to bloom. This looks like a wonderful cutting garden in the making. From this vantage point, the garden unfolds in all its splendor. The free-flowing mixed borders soften the rich lines of the raised beds. A sea of vibrant red bee balm dances harmoniously next to a swath of bright yellow rudbeckia, creating a mesmerizing tapestry of color and texture. In this corner of the garden, a flowering dogwood catches my eye. I recognize it as a kusa dogwood, distinguished by its unique fruit. They are edible and quite beautiful in the fall, when they turn red, but usually birds devour them as soon as they ripen. The ocean of golden blossoms stretches on, with the coreopsis, the tick seed. Adding a brilliant splash of color. In the background, a few hydrangea paniculata bushes were just about to set buds, promising a show later in the season. Look at the varying shades of pink, white, and blue Veronica speedwell. When grouped together in this color palette, I can imagine nothing more elegant and beautiful. This garden truly encompasses every hue of the rainbow. Moving on, another area centered with a few raised beds, which are ideal for plants that tend to spread, such as thyme and strawberry. The raised bed offers an elegant solution to keep everything neat and tidy. The gravel path lends a cohesive feel to the entire garden, and the gentle crunching sound underfoot is remarkably soothing. Not only do they add aesthetic appeal, but they also serve practical purposes by suppressing weeds and aiding in drainage. No muddy footprint from the garden to the house. At the center of the garden. I found a small pool with a bubbling fountain, and the bench completes the picture—a perfect spot for contemplating. With or without enclosing fans, this garden remains a captivating outdoor space. I still recall the warmth of that sunny July afternoon, and the sheer delight I experienced while I was in this extraordinary cage. 
and this is my whispers in the garden.